Well, I'm sometimes asked, how do you go about preparing your sermons each week? And really what I do is I take the lectionary readings from, from the Sunday's lectionary, and I pray with them each and every morning during the week. And there's always a word or a phrase or an image from one of the readings that stands out for me uh, and that speaks to my heart. And that image for me this week was the image that Jesus gives of himself in today's gospel reading of the mother hen. The mother hen protecting her chicks underneath her wings. I thought that was such a beautiful image. And as I contemplated on it this week, it actually brought me to tears uh, a couple of times during my morning meditation. I think it's such a powerful image for us to contemplate during the season of Lent. Now, we here at Douglas UCC, we're pretty used to thinking of God as mother. Every Sunday here, when we say the Lord's Prayer, we say, Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven. But I'm guessing most of us have never really contemplated Jesus as mother. Now, on the back cover of your bulletin today, you can read it when you get home, we hear about the medieval Christian mystic Julian of Norwich, and she wrote about Jesus being a mother figure. Now, of course, that brings up a lot about gender and identity, but that is the topic for another sermon. The sermon that I'm going to give today, you'll see in your bulletin, it's entitled, The Fox and the Hen. Now, that may sound like an innocuous little children's story, a nursery rhyme, but as we just heard in today's gospel reading, this story is not for children. The, the Pharisees are warning Jesus, King Herod is trying to kill you. Now, you may be surprised that the Pharisees are trying to help Jesus. Because you see, throughout the Gospels, the Pharisees were always trying to trick Jesus. They were always trying to get him in trouble. Some theologians have speculated that the Pharisees here are actually not being helpful. That some have speculated that the Pharisees were actually working with King Herod that the religious authorities were working with the political authorities to try to intimidate Jesus and to keep him out of Jerusalem. But as Jesus defiantly says in today's gospel, Jerusalem is my destiny. I'm not going anywhere. And then Jesus does something else right there in the public square, which was really brave. He refers to King Herod, the head of state, as a fox. Now, I wouldn't mind today if one of you went out to the Center Street, downtown Center Street, and referred to me as a fox, because <laughs> today that's a compliment, right? But in Jesus' day, calling somebody a fox was actually uh, one of the most disrespectful things that you could say about a person, because a fox was known as a crafty and cunning and a sly and a slick predator, one that preys upon the weak and the vulnerable. So Jesus, right there in the public square, is calling the head of state a crafty, cunning, sly, slick predator. So yes, my friends, we can see Jesus did get involved with politics. I know sometimes we hear in the church, oh, the church shouldn't get involved in politics. But Jesus did, and he was brave enough to speak out against the powers that be when they preyed upon the vulnerable. Now, we also see here that Jesus, there in the public square, was not afraid. And as I thought about that this week, I was thinking about the people in Russia who, in the public square, have been calling out their King Herod, Vladimir Putin. And we see what has happened to them, that for being so brave and speaking out against him, they have been arrested and silenced. And the same thing, of course, would happen to Jesus when he got into Jerusalem. He was arrested and silenced. So who was this King Herod? 
Well, I want to be clear, this is not the Herod that we heard about at Christmas time. If you remember at Christmas, we hear about Herod who sent the Magi, the wise men, to find the baby Jesus so that Herod could have the baby killed. That was Herod the Great. The Herod in today's story, uh, King Herod, this is 33 years later. This King Herod was Herod the Great's son. So this King Herod, he inherited his wealth and his power and position. He didn't do anything to earn it. And this King Herod is the one who's known for his great ego. He had these palaces built dripping in gold in his name. And he was the one, the tyrant, who had Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, beheaded. Because if you remember, John the Baptist spoke out against him. And if you remember, Herod had John the Baptist's head served on a silver platter. So again, this story of the fox and the hen is not a children's story. But it's a very timely one. Because, I mean, the world in which we're living today is not unlike the Jerusalem in which Jesus lived. It was fraught with conflict. And it was a world in which those fox-like powers that be and those fox-like power structures preyed upon the weak and the vulnerable. Now, Jesus called these people, the weak and the vulnerable, the least of these. And Jesus came to say, I'm starting a new kingdom. And in this kingdom, the least of these, they're going to be first. The last are going to be first. And you, the first, you foxes in power, you're going to be last in my kingdom. We hear in Scripture how the mighty, the rich, and the powerful are going to be pulled down from their thrones. And that the poor and lowly are going to be lifted up high. That's the kingdom Jesus came to establish. So you can see why the powers that be wanted to silence him. And then Jesus says something that's kind of crazy. He said in this kingdom, he's going to lead not like a fox. He's going to lead like a mother hen. Now, what leader would describe themselves as a mother hen, as a chicken? Okay. I mean, if he wanted to use that analogy, he could have said, you know, I'm going to be a mighty eagle or I'm going to be a strutting rooster or something like that. But he uses a very um, comforting image, a nurturing image. Again, we're so used to kind of that masculine power dynamic. And Jesus is saying, no, I'm more like a mother, a mother hen. And, and I'm, I'm here to protect my chicks under their wings. Such a really beautiful image. And again, this week it got me thinking about President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine staying behind to protect the people. Okay. Now, Jesus, as the mother hen, is, I think, a really powerful image for us to think about. You know, some of us growing up, we heard Jesus in those kind of masculine terms of Lord, Master, and King, the Almighty. And Jesus is saying, well, I'm not any of those things. In fact, if you, if you read the Gospels, you see every time they tried to call Jesus a king, he, he always ref, he deflected that. The image he's giving of himself is, no, I'm, I'm more like your mother, your nurturing, protective mother. How beautiful. Now, I'd like to read to you what uh, the ancient Greek philosopher Plutarch said about the mother hen. He said, What of the hen whom we observe each day at home? With what care she governs and guards her chicks? She lets down her wings for the chicks to come under. She arches her back for them to climb upon. There is no part of her body with which she does not wish to cherish her chicks if she can. 
nor does she do without a joy and alacrity with which she seems to exhibit by the sound of her own voice. So that's our Jesus. That's, that's a beautiful image of Jesus caring for us with such joy and love. As we heard in our words of integration and guidance this morning, which Eric read for us, we hear that the mother hen is actually really smart. And when she senses danger is approaching, she places herself between the chicks and the danger at first. And then she is willing to give up her own life in order to protect her chicks. And my friends, that's the image that brought me to tears during meditation this week, is I was picturing the hen's wings being pinned back against a cross. Jesus was willing to die on a cross to protect the least of these. He was willing to give up his life because that's what prophets do. They're unafraid to speak the truth even if it's going to put their own lives at risk. And they do, they do so to protect the weak and the vulnerable, the voiceless, okay, against the foxes, the King Herods of the world. So my question for you on this second Sunday of Lent is, in this story, where are you? Are you on the side of the foxes or the hens? Meaning, do you support these powerful fox-like figures? Or are you more the type that is on the side of the hen, willing to protect those who are being harmed underneath your wings? Do you have the bravery to speak out against those power systems? But then I also think about the fox and the hen being inside of us, being inside of all of us do you who who leads in your in your inner kingdom is it the fox or the hen is it your ego or is it your spirit do you care more about the worldly things we heard about that in the in the letter to the philippians which eric read about there are those who it says their god is their belly and they care more about worldly things. Do you focus more on worldly things in your inner kingdom, or do you focus more on the mother hen, that nurturing, protective, loving spirit that is always with us and within us? That's my invitation to you to reflect upon this week during your prayer and meditation time for this, uh, for this, uh, this uh, second week in Lent. May we, the people of Douglas UCC, continue to be followers of the way of Jesus. And as followers of his way, it means we have to go and do as he did, as tough as that might sound. We have to go out into the public square and we have to call out those politicians, those world leaders, and those political systems that are harming people especially the least of these in our midst that are oppressing people. We have to have the courage to, to speak out against them, but then we also have to have the courage to walk with Jesus into Jerusalem. We have to have the courage to journey to the cross. And I know we don't want to do that. I mean, who would want to do that? But if we are to truly call ourselves Christians, followers of the way of Jesus, then we must go and do as he did, walking to the cross, entering into Jerusalem, but remembering always that we do not walk alone. The presence and power of God is with us and within us. So may you find time this week to rest under the protective shelter of her wings. Namaste.